the landscape in which the analysis is applied has shifted quite a lot. Uh, we now are in an area arena where we have a lot of mega trade agreements, a lot more plurilateral agreements. We also have uh, trade policies that are now going, trade agreements that are going beyond the border. In the previous time, trade policy stopped at the flow of goods and services at the border. Now we have policies that trade agreement that goes into domestic regulations, trade facilitation, competition, investment, those are normally things that were in the purvey of national government's uh, policy for running their economies. And so trade agreement has really stepped beyond that. So the trade agreement itself has deepened and widened its intervention in, uh, and therefore have impact for more aspects of daily life. So the gender analysis then need to be more comprehensive to take into account more of these. trying to push new issues and more liberalization. For one, it mentions government procurement, which is a new issue. It's not in the WTO mandate to negotiate on this. And frankly, most developing countries are having women-friendly policies in government procurement at domestic level. So what, what should be protected is at domestic level, not to liberalize and open up these issues, because that's not going to advance women's rights. The assumption is that the outputs of policy, policy that policy is a product, and that the outputs are going to be universally experienced in the same way by all of the consumers of policy and of course that's not true as citizens we understand that women's um, uh, women's lived experiences and policy outputs the impact of those outputs are completely different whether it's relating to healthcare education access to the economy whether it's in relation to, to judicial systems whether it's in relation to access to land and property and so on so it's very important to frame gendered and feminist inclined policies to ensure that our lived outcomes um, reflect the context, the challenges, the hurdles and the deficits of society, culture, um, the economy, law and so on that we are faced with day to day. When we have a better understanding of that in a contemporary context, then we can craft um, strategies, more advocacy um, engagements that can have real meaningful impacts. I think the mistake we've made in the past is we begin to engage too late. Um, we are not very proactive in our engagement and um, we need to devise strategies that are proactive. Um, we have to prepare ourselves for um, the eventualities because I think what has happened, for example, in the case of uh, the economic partnership agreements, there was a lot of momentum around a particular period and I think some gains have been made but we are not able to sustain those gains and we need to begin to develop very sustainable plans on how beyond a particular trade agreement how can we um, um, transfer these lessons to the next. An environment to facilitate and let the movement thrive and have a space to discuss and then share the realities which talks about the consequences of economic policies including the trade policies. There is a need to build feminist movements capacity to understand, analyze on trade negotiations and agreements and investment agreements and women's rights. And then of course there is a need to develop the body of the family's analysis on trade negotiations and then create a space for us to actually advocate to bring about changes. We have a feminist analysis of trade going back uh, actually you know, quite a few decades but we really need to bring the analysis together with activism. It is very important to have the, these political spaces for sharing knowledge and that's one of the things that I also work on is trying to make space especially for younger people to you know <laughs> come and join us in this uh, international struggle. <laughs>